Hi, Eight of Cups family. Welcome to your May readings. A quick reminder, guys, that this intro will be in the beginning of each and every video. If you are not interested in watching it over and over again, I do provide timestamps within the description box and the first comment of each reading. So if you've listened to this before, you can kind of skip past it and move on to your cards for that sign. The intro is a little bit about the astrology of the month and it's really charged in May. That's kind of the word that I want to use is charged. I think we're all really charged up. We're all ready for this change. Now, I've said it in a few of my videos, I don't mean to repeat myself, but it is true. We're in a five year and May is a five month. So there's a promise right there that there will be changes occurring as well with this new moon that moves into Taurus around May 11th there's a significant shift because we move officially into eclipse season guys I know most of us are seeing the signs we're seeing the things we're seeing the changes we're seeing that things don't fit us anymore or things that do seem to fit us better and then there's like that whole hesitation thing and the month of may actually does hold a lot of consequences the decisions that you make now the things that you choose where you are kind of pushed and how you react all play a really large role in your future self so it's kind of important to take these transits pretty seriously now we also have a lot of shifts in energy this month we're moving from you know the the wonderful venus placement in taurus where we got i feel like a few weeks to kind of enjoy our surroundings enjoy the things that we have we got to tap into a more sensual side um I think some of us were probably maybe like, I don't I call it romanticizing our homes, enjoying our family a little bit, maybe getting into new routines, embracing the new weather, you know, and making plans for the future because tourist season really is all about the making of the plans. How do we want the future to look? It also played a big emphasis on our values, of course. Things are playing out around us and it's making us question do we still believe in the things we believe in? Do we still want the things that we wanted? And as everything starts to make this transition into Gemini, first Mercury and then Venus, and then the sun will all follow into a um, conglomeration of planets that are joining this north node, um, it's pretty important to understand that May will be pretty revealing. It'll be revealing as to where we're going and what fits us. And there's a need to embrace the new, which means there's a need for the courage to let some things go. South Node Sag. We're in eclipse season, guys. These nodes are super important. It's really important to know where they're falling in your chart, what areas of your life are being heavily in affected by them. And probably the biggest news of the month is, and albeit a month full of eclipses, is the taste of Jupiter moving into Pisces. This is much different than Jupiter's energy in Aquarius. Jupiter tends to expand the energy. It makes it bigger, stronger. Um, Jupiter moving into Pisces is going to have a very different feel. And what happens is Jupiter slips into Pisces just long enough for it to make a square over to that Mercury and Venus. And um, it starts to tell a story about what 2022 is going to be about. So you want to be really vigilant around the middle of the month. Start looking at the way that things are unfolding. There's a lot of emphasis of this Gemini placement. Now, about a year ago, we had Venus in Gemini go through a pretty serious retrograde period um, last May and June. We've been here before. We've been looking at these stories for a while, okay? This is not about like the new shocking things popping up. They will, of course. We have Uranus making a square to Saturn, but the ultimate issues are, are clear to you. 
you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with our ability to embrace the change, our ability to get curious, to start um, paying attention to our surroundings. Gemini does have a lot to do with our environments. Gemini rules the third house and it's all about that creativity. And when you think of creativity and you pair it up with the intellectual, the intelligence of Gemini, um, you can make a lot of really wonderful things happen. Now, I always say when I look at the fifth house, the fifth house really truly belongs to like creativity and joy, um, but it also can make you lazy. Jupiter and Pisces can also make you a little lazy, but all that third house energy gives you the new ideas, the new things that we're creating, the new directions that we're going in. And it's about exploring them. It's about opening up to the curiosity. It's about communicating, of course, having those conversations, expressing ourselves. And guys, as Saturn begins to move into this formation of the second square with Uranus, it's really important to stay true to ourselves and our authenticity. Saturn in Aquarius is going to make you separate yourself from like the group think. And that's super important right now because part of what needs to change has been over the years of us kind of doing what society, what other people, what other structures in our life expected from us. And now the 2020 happened, 2021 rolls in, and we're like, well, why are we even doing it like this in the first place? You know, one of my favorite examples of this is kind of what happened when we all started to work from home. Like there was almost a death of the nine to five. Of course, it's got its downfalls and it has its bonuses. We could work whenever we want, but we could also maybe always be working. We have to invite the new in and we have to tweak it. And what this retrograde season is all about is the tweaking. Now we have Mercury that's gonna sit in Gemini for an extremely long amount of time. It's even retrograde longer than it typically is. So you can kind of look at this time and it won't actually be retrograde until the very end of May. Mercury enters its shadow zone around May 15th close to the same time as a new moon in Taurus. We're starting to get things rolling. We're entering our shadow phase. And I just wanna tell everybody it's okay to make the changes. It's okay to proceed because Mercury is gonna give you a chance to perfect it, to make the adjustments. It's not like about the big commitments. It's about just trying it. It's about being brave enough to just explore the possibilities. Now we already had um, Pluto go retrograde, so there's definitely internal work as far as our power dynamics. Where do we give our power away? This is a time in which we take it back. In other words, if there are people in your life that manipulate you or tend to make you feel like you have to stay in this box, we're definitely in the process of growing out of the box. And Saturn is also gonna station retrograde and when Saturn stations retrograde, it does become a lot about the karmic cycles. There's things that are ending. There's old storylines in our lives that just simply don't fit us anymore. Those bad relationships, the unfulfilling jobs, the friendships just out of, you know, social niceties. And those things are going to get phased out and we have to be brave enough to embrace that. And by that, I mean, it's going to take a lot of self-love moving into cancer season soon it's right around the corner um, and the next several months like i said are extremely karmic period the summer is an extremely karmic period it's about the movement it's about the processes and it's about getting things started guys so really important to kind of tap in to the things that you truly want okay it's also really important to break out of habits of stagnation and what's keeping you small. So again, those relationships, those jobs, whatever it is where you feel like you have to kind of dim your light or you can't express yourself. And we're seeing this all the time on social media, right? Like 
it's no lie that with Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, we're going to start to see the consequences of um, what happens when you deny our freedom of speech in a way, okay? There's consequences involved. Where are you denying yourself from speaking up, from standing up for yourself when you see that something's not right or something doesn't make sense or it's not in your authenticity or integrity? Um, I think the next couple of months is like this opportunity to be like, you know what, this is just not for me and it's not about you and it's not about us and we're not going to take these things personally. We're just going to proceed in another area where it's more welcoming, where we could... Um, have a stronger purpose. All of this is because of our drive for the purpose. Our world is changing. Everything around us is changing. Our priorities are um, our structures are changing. And, and so we have to start to realize what really matters to us and what are the things that we can release. You know, if you are miserable in a job, it may be the time in which regardless of financial status or burdens, it may be time to take the risk. Um, relationships as well. If you're staying in relationships as a means of security or as a way to not be alone, you could probably expect those ideas to kind of dissolve right in front of you. And when we have Jupiter moving into Pisces, it is really all about the surrendering. It is really all about the dissolving. And in order to fully embrace it, you have to have faith. You have to have faith in the universe that we're all moving in the direction that is right for us. And it doesn't mean that other people are wrong. It just means that this is what's right for you. And of course, when we take that kind of attitude on there's a lot of people in our lives that can resist this because they need us to be this certain way and so this is where the friction of the saturn uranus square comes in and, and it's about like what are you accountable for and who are you accountable to and what really matters so a lot of self in, in inspection self um reflection that's been going on over the past the past several months that kind of comes to the surface now it starts to like really take place in the material realm there is no doubt that people will start to make the big moves make the job change move um environments change your houses change your states that you're living in change your political associations it's all about the changing to reflect who we are now and if it doesn't come from an authentic place of integrity, you can expect a lot more bumps in the road. But if you're going towards something that is reflective of your greater purpose and your destiny, you will find it to be the path of least resistance. So pay attention, guys. I hope you enjoy your cards, and I do hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful month, and I'll be back soon. Take care, guys. Bye. Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your cards for May. Thank you so much for your patience, guys. I know these readings are running a little late. Um, in true form with the eclipses, we've had a member of the family kind of move back in temporarily. So we had to move my office and things got a little bit crazy, but um, back on track now and back to your reading. And I'm super excited about your cards this month. Now, I've been telling all of my signs that the best thing that you can do in May is brace yourself for the changes. Scorpio, you are a fixed sign experiencing a new moon in your seventh house, and there are some pretty serious changes that are occurring for all of us. Um, and out of all of my fixed signs, I, I think... Scorpio 
holds kind of the key to the next phase kind of like where are we going because what's happening in this energy and all of these planetary movements in the middle of eclipse season we've got uranus sitting in your seventh house we just don't know and there's just so much that can happen and so much that can unfold in the day-to-day week-to-week environment and we could prepare and we could plan for the future as much as possible but most likely the situations are going to occur that are completely out of our control and things that we could have never planned for and that's kind of my way of saying that the universe you know saturn retrograde karma itself on top of all the other changes kind of steps in it kind of takes over kind of forces your hand now leo aquarius taurus these signs they could really struggle for the next few months they could really try to hold on to what they had or you know what they know um but i think that my scorpios actually hold Kind of that sweet spot my scorpios are the sweet spot because you guys also know when it's time to end when it's time to change you know you are the sign of death and rebirth you are all about regeneration you're all about the alchemy and i think that's really important this month and i'm going to kind of jump around in this reading i'm going to do some unusual things because the way that these cards laid out along with the oracles were actually really shocking to me not shocking in a bad way just how absolutely um how beautiful spirit can be in its communication so let's talk about these two cards really quick your energy this month or what the universe is asking of you is this king of wands now he's certainly my mars character you know the king of wands is smart he's strategic he's protective he's determined you know courageous all of these really wonderful um attributes and then your environment is that of strength. So right away, there's a lot of fire. There's a lot of passion in you. You are probably feeling very passionate and very emotional as Mars makes its way through Cancer. Your ninth house of beliefs, your kind of mental space of expansion, Mars is coming through. And it's going to kind of do this thing where it severs some of the old and unneeded and outdated mental programming. Now, it's probably not going to be scenarios where you're like, oh, that's like the universe kind of rewiring my brain. No, it's probably going to be more like through irritations more through combative people combative situations you know this is like the universe handing you lessons probably through other people in external circumstances so the good news is being the king of wands i don't think that plowing through the obstacles is going to be an issue because there's really not much that's going to hold a king of wands back from what he ultimately wants and desires. But because we have the strength card in your environment, because there's literally two animals, two lions in both these environments, there's probably going to be a little bit of a power struggle. And I'm seeing kind of like a clash, a clash of egos, now this could be completely internal again mars going through cancer in your ninth house absolutely um mm, 
when I see strength come up in the environment, it's always a warning that there will be circumstances in which you have to remain strong. Your environment is going to demand a lot of you this month. And I think it's going to demand a lot of you internally. And it's so important for you to know your truth, to stand by your ethics this month. Now, I keep talking about Mars with this card. And I'm also kind of... I'm laughing because we have this lion here in the back, this courageous lion, you know, that's fearless. And then we have this lizard here. And, you know, when you think about the lizard, I think about somebody who is very adaptable to their environment, right? And then we have this card, a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. Now... Mars, again, being in Cancer in your ninth house means that things are probably going to come to a culmination and there's probably some things that have to end because I get the feeling that Scorpio knows exactly where they're going. They know exactly what they want. There's a desire and they are determined to move towards it. Personal issue reaches a resolution, full moon in Cancer. Like I said... There's so much cardinal energy here. But there are also things that probably need to culminate and come to an end in order for you to understand what the new beginnings are. And here underneath the strength card, we have the soul family card. Call in your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. See, the card of strength and not having to be alone might be some of the bigger issues that are playing out in May. There might be a feeling of isolation. We have a Five of Pentacles here. Um, but I think the clarity comes when you understand that that isolation, the idea that you feel alone is is all in it's sort of that illusion it's that ninth house thought process it's kind of getting crushed over the course of the next few months okay now we've got this king of swords and i don't feel as though that is you for some of you it will be for some of you there is a part of you or a part of your life that you're kind of probably emotionally detaching so for sure that energy could be yours. Maybe some of you are thinking about walking away from a relationship, walking away from a job of some sort, um, even you know friendships, um, a certain path that you are on. The King of Swords can definitely, especially rooted down by an Ace of Cups, he could really cut off that communication. He can cut off that emotion quite easily. And the King of Swords can be pretty cold right? Like there's not a whole lot of affectionate energy coming from the king of swords. It's very intellectual and it's very in your mind. And maybe you are in your mind about some things because I see this five of pentacles and I see this eight of swords and I can't help but notice that this is kind of your own emotional prison. I say that, I mean, because the whole idea is the imprisonment within your mind because you believe that things are going to go a certain way. And this is indicative of somebody who feels stuck, right? And because you're coming out as a king of wands and because I know that ultimately you want the breakthrough. But the truth is the breakthrough isn't going to come from external sources this month. The breakthrough is going to come from a very internal place, okay? Saturn retrograde in your fourth house. There's probably some things that need to get healed within your early onset of relationships, okay? Scorpio, I know this is kind of a little bit out there, but these are the messages that I'm getting for you. 
and I'm looking at this Saturn going retrograde in the fourth house and this is about karma and this is about like karma isn't necessarily a bad thing right like you didn't when Saturn goes retrograde oftentimes we get a second chance to kind of look at our behaviors and how could we have handled something better. And it's not that we do anything wrong. It's, we're not being punished for anything in this universe, you know. It's, it's consequence. And how could we do it different? And how could we do it better? And the fourth house is all about family. It's all about what you want to build. Oftentimes it's kind of what we're born into and all the emotional baggage that we take from our childhood, you know, even if it's great, there's still emotional baggage. There's still things that we were told, ways that we were told we had to be or act, you know, all depending on how we were loved by our parents or how we were loved by our siblings or how we felt visible or invisible to others. We kind of carry this all into our adult relationships and you know nowadays it's very rare to just have one solid relationship so you you're going through all of these relationships and you're learning more and more about yourself and how much more are you adding to that emotional baggage the thing is scorpio like i said new moon seventh house we've got to clear the path for healthier stuff we're all kind of on this mission of clearing the path to the healthier us and yours lays deeply rooted in that fourth house of emotions and i don't know why there's a lot of swords there's a lot of pentacles there's a lot of focus on your stability there's a lot of being up in your head and yet i am so drawn to these cups because yes scorpio you are probably i mean all joking aside you are probably the most skeptical non-trusting out of my water signs you know you and cancer kind of hold that protectiveness um, but that doesn't mean that you don't long for connection. And for my Scorpios, it has to connect on some pretty deep levels. And the bottom line is that there seems to be a little bit of confusion about how this whole healthy relationship thing works. Now, the, going back to this King of Swords, for some of you, I do think this is an external source. And I think it's somebody that triggers you immensely it could actually represent several people or more of like that environment for you in this month there might just be a lot of people kind of spilling the tea for scorpio lately and it doesn't have to be even like towards them maybe they're just overhearing something that somebody says maybe you're reading some books doing some self-discovery and you're like oh damn that's totally true. I should look into that. I should, I, you know, because the King of Swords, like this sword and this Ace of Swords here is all about the truth. And you are surrounded by all these sharp objects, meaning that you are probably feeling a bit afraid, cornered, right? Because you can't see the truth. There's some kind of truth that you are being forced to look at this month. And the truth is, bottom of line, bottom line of this entire reading is the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles, right here in between an Ace of Cups and an Ace of Swords, couldn't be more honest. Now you're coming out of King of Wands, and we have not one single wand here, which tells me that you are probably in this stuck place and that's okay that's exactly where the universe really wants you to be and there's a purpose for all of it some of you have somebody in your life this king of swords who honestly may be a little bit rough around the edges maybe harsh communication um, there could be somebody who's literally cutting you off or cutting off communication with you making you kind of feel this wound, this, this five of pentacles, this abandonment, kind of, there's definitely a victim energy here. Like you've been victimized, meaning that this king of swords, maybe by way of communication 
words, attitude, and coldness really triggered some kind of old wound within you, making you feel unstable. And oftentimes this is a card in which you just don't feel good about self. When we're in the five of pentacles mode, there's probably a lot of shame. There's feeling like we can't provide for others and definitely an overwhelming feeling of just not being good enough. And I think that's something that keeps you rooted, probably keeps you rooted in some unhealthy scenarios, unhealthy relationships, probably with people more with, with this king of swords kind of energy. But the truth is this king of swords, ace of cups, two of cups in reverse, this relationship throws you off of balance. But you keep giving, Scorpio, there's a part of you that keeps giving. There might be a part of you, if this is you, the king of swords, there might be a part of you that's kind of really looking towards the future. And there's definitely that in these cards. There's a feeling of being able to kind of be the observer this month. And if you can be the observer this month, if you can really take a look at the relationships within your life, because remember we have the soul family card here. We have a new moon and all of this energy in your seventh house with a Uranus making a square to Saturn, okay? When these things happen, relationships that are not healthy for us will dissolve. The universe will make sure, you know, the Six of Pentacles is kind of like my pre-justice card, which means that there's an amount of karma that's coming in this month that's gonna say, yeah, but you keep trying to make this relationship work and the universe wants to bring you in something else, something that's more fitting to your energy. It might be the first couple of weeks, and then the, you know, the the beginning of the end of May, I guess, because this reading's late, in which there's a little bit of feeling like things are ending. Maybe you feel hopeless a little. Maybe you feel like there's a lack of options. Maybe you feel stuck in a situation that's holding you back and it's keeping you from this Ace of Cups. And the King of Swords can also definitely represent kind of our soul contract, soul family, King of Swords. There's some kind of a past life kind of thing that you have to go through. You have certain soul mates in which you have to act out this certain energy. You have to learn these lessons before you can move on to the next thing. But I think this is what you, Scorpio, are determined to have. And that is fine. That is great. In fact, this is the most beautiful set of cards I can imagine and everything that I would want for you. Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords. The truth is of what you deserve and what you're going to get is what you put in. So if you're recovering from a shitty relationship, if you're recovering from something abusive or if somebody took advantage of you, if you're walking away from something where somebody was very cold and unloving to you, I think Scorpio wants to find their heart again. But before you can open up the heart, you have to see the truth. You have to see the role that you played in it. Five, six, okay, it's a process. Meaning not everything is gonna happen this month, okay? You're in a process and it's up and down and it's back and forth and it's very dynamic and yes, you're probably gonna feel a little bit unbalanced. My Two of Cups card in reverse is simply not feeling aligned. And I think you're not feeling aligned because you're not feeling the emotional connection in this. And really what your soul is longing for is your 
soul tribe family. It's for your soulmates. It's for the people that do represent an even give and take, for the people that will invest in you. Scorpio, you're learning to trust again. But is this going to be easy? Absolutely not. Like I'm looking at this, this seven of cups down here next to this two of cups. And to me, like Saturn, retrograde, your fourth house, you're going to hit some brick walls. You're going to think you got the breakthrough. You're going to think you've got the go ahead. Look at here, closing door. I think the universe for all of us is going to kind of like breadcrumb us down the right path and because we're so humid and because we're so stubborn and because we just want what we want because it's safe because I mean even when you're in horrible situations oftentimes we are prone to stay there just because we kind of know what to expect and I think for a lot of us like we're looking at the, the world right we're looking at the country and inflation and all of this craziness that's going on and we're like yeah maybe it's not time to move maybe it's not time to like make those big changes maybe it's not time to quit your safe job so you can go follow a dream maybe it doesn't feel like it's the right time to step out of a relationship or a marriage you know these risks might seem really crazy and you are rooted down by this stability. You're rooted down by this hierophant energy, and that is the energy of spiritual lessons. Scorpio, the truth is, anytime, anywhere that you're selling yourself short, you're going to hit a brick wall. There's going to be a couple smacks to the face. There might be a couple hits to your ego. Like I said, king of wands and the strength. You're going to fight for some things that aren't meant for you and the universe is going to fight you back and it's going to get really uncomfortable until you are able to surrender. Now I want to talk a little bit about this Six of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. Because I think for some of you Scorpios, you're starting to figure the things out. Like, boom, the second half of the month, things start to move. You're like, oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. I'm giving a little too much here, or maybe I'm being a little too closed off there. Maybe this is like the negative thinking, and I need to improve the thinking. Maybe this is like the emotional detachment because I don't know how to trust people. And now I know that I have to start to go into things with an open heart. And this is with anything that you do, not just like love relationships. You have to know that you're deserving of love. You have to know that you can give and receive it. Now, for some of us, giving comes very, very naturally. Receiving, not so much. It's like if we receive love, that means that we're going to have to risk one day not having it. Boom, there's the fear. There's definitely lessons about reciprocity in our situations this month. And the truth of the matter is you might feel in your life like others have abandoned you. And so this whole idea of reciprocity really confuses you because it goes against logic. And here we are, the perfect balance of heart and mind. And that is a trick for us this month. If you want to plow through the obstacles, if you want to get to the things that you really love, if you want to do those things, then you have to learn to balance the heart and the mind. The intuition with the logic. And another thing is five of pentacles, seven of cups. Be careful about the whole idea of keeping score. Okay? Mars and Cancer 
our fourth house, it could kind of put us into like this emotional inventory and we start looking at our relationships and we're like, oh yeah, well, I did this and this and this and this for them and they never even returned this phone call and blah, blah, blah. And we can kind of get ourselves in this whole, I'm not going to trust anybody mode. Love isn't even worth it. Because I think the struggle or the natural tendency is to say that love isn't even worth it. I'm not going to open my heart. I'm not going to give my love to anyone else because ultimately it becomes a distraction. Because here we have this Hierophant. Here we have this King of Wands. These are both cards of real determination and devotion, right? Like there's no stopping the Hierophant. There's no stopping the King of Wands. And the Hierophant is like super ethical. It comes out under this Ace of Swords. And it's a reminder that the universe is going to tell you to do the right things this month. There's going to be an emphasis, and maybe there's an emphasis on you having to give a little bit more. But you also have to deliver some truth. And I do feel that there is a possibility to heal some of these relationships once you heal yourself and your whole, all of the illusions that you built around it. Okay? Retrograde Mercury, guys, honestly... Eighth house, <sighs> this one's going to be rough. I'm not even going to lie. This is a lot about other people's resources, other people's energy, how other people value us and how we value the other people in our lives. And, you know, it's really easy to go through life and just be like, oh, this relationship never worked because this person's a jerk and this person, you know, and we get all defensive. But, but we wear that kind of like this armor. I think the universe is going to ask you to take off your armor to kind of really look at these things honestly. There might be some conversations with people from your past, of course, coming back into play. There might be some truth that comes out, you know? But I don't think the universe wants you to close off your heart. I think the universe is kind of asking you to open your heart, but also to honor yourself. Allow yourself to participate in those conversations and listen, okay? Six of Pentacles, make sure that you're listening as much as you're speaking. King of Swords is a great communicator. King of Wands, not so much. He's a doer. Now over here, right next to the Ace of Swords, we got these cards. Now I don't typically read these cards to you, but it was just so funny the way that the wording ties in with these other cards. So I kind of just want to read it to you just so you could understand like how profound these messages are and I was also kind of blown away by the fact that you got this this card number 12 which breaks down to a three which is all about creativity and then we have like keys hanging off this this creature and he's right here next to a door closing door completion And it looks like the universe is giving you a key to a door that's closing on you. Maybe this door has a lot to do with this two of cups in reverse. And this whole situation might look like it's ending, Scorpio might look like it's ending but what's happening is it's getting a brand new foundation card number 28 building blocks breaking down to a 10. okay so let's take a look at these cards really quick okay 
Dragon's Horde. Protecting the future, legacy, and true riches. In the Dragon's Horde, jewels and precious objects scatter the ground, while ancient scrolls inscribed with the wisdom teachings lie within reach. This is a rich opportunity, and you can fill your satchel with the treasures you like best. Take the gifts offered you and dedicate them to the well-being of all, beginning with your own. But beware, all that glitters is not gold. Select the precious treasures that will further your spiritual growth and avoid the shiny objects that are empty of real value. Know that the hoard does not belong to you. It belongs to our grandchildren. What is the inheritance that you wish to leave for tomorrow? What seeds are you planting that you will harvest in your old age? And when are you wary? What seeds will bear fruit after you are no longer here? The dragon guards the legacy of the future. All who come empty-handed or to fill only our, po our own pockets with gold lie in a dusty heap of bones. You have been allowed entrance by virtue of your kindness or your spiritual practice or sheer luck. Consider as well that your present, this moment, is the future to the dragon. You may be the one we have all been waiting for, so do not hesitate to take the bequest has been reserved for you since the beginning of time. This is the time to be bold. Do not delay or overthink. Remember to bring an offering for the dragon, lest it believe you are its lunch. A simple prayer will do. So I just love all of this energy about protecting the future you know, and the tie to ancestry and to family. And we have a personal resolution, full moon in cancer, which is all about family. And we have this card here about soul family, just underneath the strength card. And I can't help but wonder if some of you Scorpios are really in the mode. Again, Saturn retrograde, fourth house of getting a second chance to kind of preserve the idea of family, you know? Family can be in business. Family can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It can be your relationships. But I do get a feeling that we, that we are protecting something much bigger than yourself. Therefore, you're being asked to give. Now, it talked about, it talked about um, watching what you're investing in. Don't just go for the shiny things. And here we have all of the shiny things, right? Right next to the Hierophant card, which is always a card of quality, long-term stability stuff. And Scorpio, the truth is you may be a little bit uh, out of alignment with what really matters this month. You want to be careful about that. You can get distracted. You can get sucked into kind of things that aren't going to last long or they're not going to, you know, lead you down all the right places. So you want to be careful that the choices that you're making this month are high quality choices, that they reflect your dignity and your grace and your ethics, okay? Saturn retrograde in your fourth house is no joke. You kind of have to honor your family, your emotion, and the foundations that you have. And I think for some of you, if you're going through some sort of a divorce or something, to be honest, this might be where you have to kind of really get things together and make sure that the kids are number one. It doesn't have to, it doesn't mean staying together, but making the environment more loving for the other people a little bit safer, a little bit calmer. Because remember, you're doing things for the greater good. It's not just about you, Scorpio. And other here, we got card number five. Closing door, endings, completion, and your greater calling. When the closing door shows up, it's a call to recognize an ending, to terminate a relationship, job, task, or situation that has been dragging on for too long. Unlock the cage. Guys, seriously. Unlock the cage. 
you have been trapped in and shut the door behind you. This is not the time to worry about what others might think or feel. Instead, break with your routine, consider what you think and how you feel, and be true to your heart's calling. Seriously, Ace of Swords, Ace of Cups. It's time to walk out the door. If you do not see a door but only a solid wall in front of you, ask for assistance. Muster the courage to say no more. Remember as well that no one else needs to be wrong in order for you to do what you've known you needed to do for a long time. If the door to a project or a relationship has been closed to you, stop knocking on it. You have tried that already and no one answered, at least not in the way you would have liked. Take this as a gift, difficult and painful as it might be, and move on. Every door that shuts is an invitation to find another way, another path to the destination. Better to recognize this earlier than later. How many of us leave a relationship or job years after we knew it was time to move on? Stop wallowing in the pain and lingering in the reasons why things did not work. It is keeping you from your greater calling. Bow deeply before that closed door and give thanks to the lessons and set yourself free. You guys are definitely kind of in between worlds. I can't say it enough. There are things within you that are ending and there are things happening in your life that are becoming much more enriching. Do not get lost in the haze and the confusion, Scorpio. Which means don't get lost in your head. You got to feel your way through this. Okay. Last card, card number 28, building blocks, which is again another card of Saturn. It's a, it breaks down to a one and this is a new beginning. This coming out next to the Hierophant says a lot about what you rebuild next, how strong it will be. The next relationships that you have, if one is ending, you'll definitely make this give and take energy, this reciprocity, a priority, okay? Maybe you're taking a hard look at some of the decisions that you made in the past and some of the reasons why you were attracted to the things that you were attracted to, and you're realizing that they were never for your greater good. They were never, um, may have been beneath you a little. All right, Scorpio, uh, really wonderful, positive reading. I think that May and June is going to be a pretty incredible couple of months for everybody. Um, I'm definitely going to be back. Hopefully, I'll be a little bit more on time with the June readings. And I'm going to try to drop in before the eclipses and maybe do a pick a pile reading. So I will catch you then, Scorpio. I love you so much, guys. Take care. Have a great month. Bye.